Hello and welcome to another installment of Techs Helping Techs. Today we're going to go over the HST3000 and specifically the digital volt ohm meter section. By no means is this any representation for any corporation's use of this meter. This is strictly for techs to help other techs. I'm Johnny Breakroom and we're going to get started. First thing we're going to notice is the meter will show copper measurements. By default it is set for option number one digital volt ohms. There are two ways to actually launch this application. You can go from the highlighted section here and then select the OK button or the faster way to move around this meter is if you know the section you want to launch as in case number one pick the corresponding key. So we're going to go ahead and hit number one. As you'll notice the first thing that comes up is the voltage snapshot. The voltage snapshot is the default screen. You cannot change this screen. It is always the first one that's going to come up. Keep in mind you should always use your handheld uh, foreign voltage meter. Uh, some companies use uh, a, a 188 meter, uh, others use different devices, but please check to make sure there is no foreign voltage on your plant prior to hooking up the meter. If there was some hazardous voltage, the meter would indicate it. Uh, your hair would become curly like mine, and you would probably take a couple days off of work. So please, safety first, check the cable pair for foreign voltage. What the screen will do is just take a quick snapshot. As we can see here, there is no foreign battery, no AC, nor is there any DC current on this cable pair. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the option that shows the display. They are called soft keys, so we're going to hit the first soft key right here, and it brings up the menu and tells us what's available under digital volt ohm. The first thing you're going to see is option number one. We're going to go to option number one. Option number one is the pot styler. Basically what the pot styler will allow you to do is actually use this meter as a butt set or slash test set. So if you don't want to break out the butt set and you're on a cable pair, so you simply go to pot styler. You have to have dial tone obviously, punch in a phone number. We're going to put in 555-1212. Um, I know this is a good number because I see it in all the movies that I watch. So if you've got dial tone, you input the number and you simply go and select OK. You should hear dial tone get drawn. From that point, you will watch it dial out. The, the way this device works is you've got a microphone right here, this little pinpoint, and there's a speaker at the very bottom. So if you want to use it as a butt set slash speakerphone, by all means, do so. So that's basically what we're looking at under the POTS dialer, which was option number one. We'll go back to display. Take a look at option number two. Option number two talks about if there's any AC voltage out here. If you've got any foreign AC voltage on the line, you will actually see it moving around on your meter. Now keep in mind, this is a live shot, so when you're looking at a live shot, in this case we're looking from tip to ring, it indicates 0.4 volts that are on here. The nice thing about this meter, what JDSU has done with uh, incrementing firmware, is add some special features. In this case, it shows the lowest voltage, which was 0.04 volts, and then the highest voltage of 05. If you want to move from the tip ring to the ring ground side, you can simply hit the right arrow key, and you will see it toggle over to the ring segment. The nice thing about this, again, is perhaps you do have some foreign voltage on this pair. And I'm talking to my partner, Smitty. He's out there assisting me trying to find any kind of trouble that I might have on the, on the ring side or whatever side I'm working on. So in this case, let me set up my simulation here. If I'm not paying attention, what I'm seeing here is that right now when I look at my meter, and I'm not looking at Smitty, but I had a 9.8 volt foreign voltage that was swinging out there. So that's a nice feature. If you're not watching your meter, it will indicate to you if there is some swinging trouble out there. So keep that in mind. Now if, you're, if you've messed up the meter and you need to reset this, instead of turning the meter off and turning it back on, you simply go to the results soft key right here. And what you want to do is tell it to clear the results, number one, or hit OK. We're going to go ahead and hit OK in this case. And now you'll see that I just cleared my counters and I'm ready to resume testing. So keep that in mind. If you happen to catch some voltage that really wasn't there because you were messing with your leads, simply results, clear the screen, start over. To move to the right, excuse me, to move down to the tip side of the segment, I can simply hit the right arrow key again and you'll see the meter scrolls down. 
to go the other direction, if you want to go from the bottom towards the top, you simply hit the left arrow key, which will then bring you back up. I'm going to go back to the display screen and show you what other tests we have here as well. One of the other features I should bring up in the menu is uh, uh, the meter. If you hit the up and down arrow key when you're in a proper test, it will change the test just as it does if you go to display and then select. But if you're not familiar with the meter, it might be best to start with display and then work your way around. So let's go to option number three. Look for any foreign DC voltage that might be on this cable pair. So what we're looking at right now is the rings to, to, to ground side because the meter knew that's where we're looking on AC voltage. So I'll hit the left arrow key and what we're going to do at that point is bring us back up to the tip to the ring side to see if there's any foreign battery on this cable pair. Well again, I'm talking to Smitty. I'm not paying attention to my meter. It looks like zero right now. So I talk to Smitty real quick and then all of a sudden I start taking some swing of trouble. I go back to look at my meter. It still says zero. However, here we go. 12 volts. I had foreign batteries swinging on the tip to ring. So keep that in mind again. If you've got swinging trouble, you don't have to constantly watch your meter. You can look away, but just take a look at the highest voltage to see if, in fact, you do have a problem out there. All right. If you, need, again, need to clear the screen, you go to results and then tell it to clear the results and start all over again. The next option under display is the resistive snapshot number four. So we'll go ahead and hit number four and launch resistive snapshot. Again, this is just a snapshot. So if we have swing in trouble, it's not going to identify it. This is just quickly going to go out and take a peek to see if there's any major fault or impediment in your cable pair. The meter will go up to 999 mega ohms. Uh, depending on what technology you're dealing with, your company will have certain specifications on what the limitations are. So please check with your corporate documents to see what applies to your company. This is just a snapshot. What it's looking for is to see if any of the copper elements are actually touching. So if my tip and ring conductors were touching, it would in indicate that under tip and ring. Now, you're going to see another soft key called leakage right here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the leakage button. Don't run the leakage on any equipment that's plugged into the cable pair. You have to have this on an open pair because it is going to send about 85 to 90 volts across the pair as it gives you the warning sign with the lightning bolt. So be careful. It's not enough to zap you, but it can destroy equipment on the other end. So please make sure when you run this test there is no CPE. And if you're looking in, there's no coils in the, in the CO. What leakage does? Leakage actually tries to send the voltage through the insulation of the cable pair. In regular resistance, it's seeing if the wires are actually touching. Through leakage, it's trying to blow 90 volts of battery across the insulators to, to make the actual pair short out. This is another important test. You've got to make sure that the parameters are correct and that you're not having any trouble with your insulators. Again, check with your corporate documentation, which will indicate what the values, uh, the limitations can be with your documentation there. Okay, we're going to go back to display. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to do a resistive, or excuse me, resistance continuous. What this does, I'm going to turn off the leakage here real quick. Sorry about that. It's going to go out and take a look now at a cable segment. All right. So what we're looking at right now, since the last test was on the tip side to see if there's any, any issues, right now I'm looking live. If there's any swinging trouble, the difference will be now instead of being the highest resistance, it's going to be the lower resistance. So I would see a change down here. So I'm looking at the tip side. It looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any issues on it at all. So I'm instead of going to go down to the and then go up to the t tip to ring side. So if I hit the right arrow key, it'll scroll automatically to the top. We're going to hit the left arrow key and scroll back backwards to the ring side. Go down here. We hit that. Now we're on the rig segment of the cable pair. Again, I'm talking to Smitty. I'm not really paying attention to what's going on. This cable pair looks good. Then all of a sudden, I might have some swing and trouble. And you'll notice the indicators of the meter changes, but I'm not paying attention to it because I'm not looking at it. We carry on our conversation. I'm talking to the customer, Mrs. Jones, what a beautiful garden you have. I go back and look at my meter. If I'm not paying attention, it looks like I have no trouble. However, the lowest resistance was 11.2 K ohms. So I had some swinging trouble on my ring side. So keep that in mind. Again, if I need to clear that, if I'm changing from one pair to another pair, 
instead of changing the turning off the meter I simply go back to here tell it to clear the results and away they go they're gone you can go and then move on to the next cable pair or rerun your test same applies on the leakage if you hit the leakage button it will constantly send out 85 to 90 volts and try to blow through the insulator um, this is actually a good test and I recommend you do it on everything you can any any time you're working with a cable pair if I go back to display take a look at their other options here I've got distance to short number six what this does is if you've got a hard short on your cable pair it will help you determine how far away that short is I'm gonna put a little short on this thing real quick let's see if we can make it hard enough to actually identify where this thing is at All right. So what it's telling us right now is that there's a 765, we're swinging around a little bit, 780 ohm tip ring short. Based on the footage, 24 gauge, it tells me at 69 degrees how many feet away it is. Let me see if I can get this back here for us. Sorry about that. Well, this isn't working out for me. So basically what it does, it tells you how many feet away. In another segment, we're going to go through the TDR. The TDR would be the best way to find out actually where that short is, and we'll spend time talking about that. But if you need to change your cable gauge, you actually hit the left or right arrow key. So I'm going to hit the left arrow key. You'll see my gauge went down to 22 gauge, 19 gauge, 26 to 24. If I hit the right arrow key, it reverts back to the other direction. If you need to change the temperature of the cable pair, up and down arrow key. I'll change it up, increases the temperature. If I go down, it decreases the temperature. Again, you'll have to take a look at your corporate documents to find out what the temperature ranges are for your cable pairs in the areas that you work. If you worked in the Southland, temperatures obviously be hotter than they would if you worked up in Alaska in the wintertime. If I go back to display, the last test you can run is the current test. You have to have dial tone on this thing. So if you're working on a, a, de a dead pair and there's nothing on it, this test basically will just basically show you if you have any swinging current out there. But we're going to actually put this on a dial tone just to give you an indication of what this does for you. It does several things. First thing it does is it actually checks how many milliamps you have. Check again with your corporate documents to find out what the lowest and the highest milliamps are for a dial tone circuit. You should have that information. Hopefully you have it already memorized. The higher the number, the hotter the signal, usually the closer you are to the switch. You can probably hear the relays clicking. The meter, the relays constantly click while it's running this test. Okay, Here's another great feature. Depending on what type of switch you're dealing with, this meter will actually help you determine if you have a good ground source, 25 ohms or less, at your interface. That's very important, particularly when you're dealing with broadband type services. You've got to have a good ground. I simply go over to the ground check button over here, and I hit that. It goes out, the relays start clicking, and now it's going to check my ground source to see if I have a good ground. The first test we're going to run is with no ground. There may be a wire at the interface, but it's not going anywhere. I have a bad ground. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it looks like with a good ground. Now, again, keep in mind, depending on your switch, it may give you a false positive here, saying that there's a bad ground when, in fact, it actually is good. There's other ways that you can test that. We'll go ahead and try this again. I'm going to go to the, the uh, DC current to get it off, go back and hit it to the ground check, and here we go again. It's going to go out, take a look to see if in fact there is a good ground. Now I know I have a good 25 ohm ground on this circuit now. I should get a good reading. And there we go. I have a good ground. Very, very important when you're dealing with broadband services. If you do not have a, a good ground at the NI, it could lead to impulse noise issues and wideband noise, so make sure you do have good ground. All right, that pretty much wraps it up for the digital volt ohm section. So thank you for joining, and we'll continue on with new segments down the road. Take care. This is Johnny. Goodbye.